Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. Today, I got the Michter's 10-year-old single barrel bourbon whiskey. This one's bottled at 47.2% ABV. It is a sourced product. I'll let you know what that means when I nose it, taste it, and give it a mark. This is barrel number 17-1150 on the nose. So right away, I'm just hit with this awesome, rich nuttiness on here. You get walnut, almonds, peanuts for sure. And then you get like sweet corn, almost like if you've ever put an entire cob on the barbecue, you kind of get that aroma, that like charred husk, uh, corn, sweet kind of corn note. It's really, really nice. You get butter, some spiciness in here. I want to say it's like a rye kind of spice. I'm not sure of the mash bill, but I'm picking up just a little bit of rye perhaps. You get that typical caramel, vanilla. You get some clove in there. And then you get like, it's like dried fruit, kind of like um, dried apricots. It really reminds me of like a trail mix. When you get all that nuttiness, you get the dried fruits in there, a little bit of everything. I mean, really complex, rich, deep nose. Absolutely great. This is amazing, amazing nose. Let's go palette. Those nutty notes carry over. The peanuts there, really, really good. Uh, the dried fruit, the apricots there again. I get this like nice sweetness, like a marshmallow kind of sweetness to it. You get super dark brown sugar, really, really rich. Just really, really great whiskey. This stuff is really nice. Finish, nice like velvety mouth coating texture to it. Pretty viscous for being at a 47.2% um, ABV. Decent amount of the viscosity to it. Um, Finish, you get some oak notes. Kind of like heavy on the oak on the finish, I'd say. You get a lot of like barrel influence on this, just on the finish. But really good, fits with everything else very perfectly. Um, you get, again, that nuttiness that carries over again. Really rich, full of um, peanuts, um, walnuts, almonds. Again, all throughout the finish. Length, I'd say it's like, it's not quite as long as you'd probably imagine with all this complexity. It kind of goes about, I'd say it's medium approaching long, but more like medium on the scale. It's like between medium and long, it's more medium than it is long. It kind of like cuts off a little bit. Um, that's probably my only fault with this whiskey because it's so, so good. Um, really, really like it. It kind of reminds me of, of Booker's and the fact that you get that nuttiness in there. Um, you get those dark, rich nut flavors, those dark, rich, like brown sugar, caramel, vanilla kind of stuff. It does remind me a lot about um, a lot of Booker's in this, in this bottle for sure. Score wise for me, um, I'm going to give it 90.5 out of a hundred. Now for value, I paid 120 us dollars for this particular bottle. I found other bottles for 105. So between 105 and 120 US dollars, I think that price is justified. I would definitely pay 120 US dollars for this bottle. It is that good. Now, secondary prices on these, they can get up to 150, 170-ish on the secondary. So you're looking to pay about, you know, $50 more on the secondary, which isn't huge considering what some bourbons go for on secondary markets. Um, I think once you get up to the 150 points, I would start deducting a bit of value, but still, um, for $120 US, I think that price is justified, which means I'm gonna leave value at zero. So 90.5 out of 100 on this one. Now let's just talk where this whiskey's coming from. So like I said before, it's a sourced whiskey. So that means that Michter's is not producing this themselves. They are sourcing it from another company and bottling it themselves. A lot of people, you know, might think that that's something to look down upon. I just, I don't because when you're sourcing a barrel, you're tasting it first. You're knowing exactly what you're buying. 
Um, the people at Michter's obviously know what they're doing because they produce a lot of good whiskey, this one in particular. So they're buying a good cask, a good barrel, and they're bottling it. Um, they use what they call their own, uh, it is further mellowed by our signature filtration. So whatever that is, um, it works. It works for this for sure. So I don't have a problem with sourced whiskey, um, not at all. And like I said, sourced whiskey, you know what you're getting. You know you're getting something that you are putting your name on and you're putting it out there. Um, so I like it. I like it. Um, now, where are they sourcing this from? I'm not really sure. And it's not really disclosed. Like I said, this reminds me of, of, uh, of Booker's. So I would say maybe it's sourced from Jim Bean. I've heard rumors. Um, some people say it's sourced from Heaven Hill. Perhaps, yeah, perhaps I could see that. Heaven Hill perhaps sourcing this. Um, but Michter's has started to produce their own whiskey. I think in 2016, they started their own production. So that stuff's probably gonna be coming out, um, you know, in the next five to, you know, 10 years or so, you'll start seeing it come out. Um, so interest, it could be interesting to see. Um, I kinda wanna keep some of this around and wait till um, they produce their own stuff and kinda compare it and see, uh, see how it changes or what's different about it. I'm sure they're gonna try to kinda create some of this character, but you know it's gonna be a completely different whiskey. So yeah, there you have it. Um, really like Michter's. If you're a Booker's fan, I would recommend trying to find one of these. Um, secondary market, uh, it's a little pricey when you get up and going there, but if you can find it on the shelf, 105, 120, I do recommend picking up for that price. Really, really good whiskey. Uh, thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Let me know what you think. Um, how do you like the Michter's line? Have you tried their Don H statement stuff? Have you tried the 10 year old? Uh, the 10 year old Rye is a really good one as well. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, have a good one. Cheers.